I'm feeling really frosty over here because I haven't actually sat here and filmed a video like this for you guys in a couple of weeks. I did my Q&A before I left London and then afterwards I was just working on my London vlogs which I really hope you enjoyed but I missed sitting here and talking to you guys so I hope you've been well and today we're getting back into the routine and we're kicking things off with a really fun topic at least it's fun if you ask me because today we're going to be looking at some pieces from my Hermes collection that took me literal years to hunt down that aren't your traditional elusive Hermes bags so not your traditional Birkins and Kellys because we all know that those pieces can be the challenge of a lifetime to get your hands on. Instead, we're going to be discussing some pieces that, in my experience, have been a lot more difficult to get, which is surprising because you wouldn't think that these pieces are that limited, but in reality they are. So without further ado, if you'd like to see these pieces and hear my thoughts on whether they are worth the money, and the time, then make sure to give this video a thumbs up, subscribe down below if you haven't done so yet, and keep on watching. Why don't we start with something kind of random, which you really wouldn't think is that hard to get, and I actually have a conspiracy on why I think these pieces are that hard to come by, but in my experience, some things that were almost impossible to get, I mean, I was able to get them, but my collection is still not complete, even though I think I placed an order for these, I think almost a year ago at this point, which is Hermes Cutlery. Now I don't have the actual pieces here because they are currently in my dishwasher. I obviously don't keep my cutlery in these little pouches because I use them on a daily basis. And because of that, they have been some of the best investments, the best Hermes investments in my opinion, which I know some people when they say luxury investments, they talk about the resale value of their pieces, which makes perfect sense. But personally, when I talk about good investments, the pieces that I consider to be the best investments into my collection and into my life are the pieces that I use on a regular basis, which my Hermes cutlery is definitely one of those things because I use these genuine on a regular basis. I make sure to put in a ton of clips here just so you guys can see the collection that I own, which I mean, I'm not saying that they are a must have in your life that you need to run out there and get them now. But all I'm going to say is that any meal that you eat at home with these pieces will feel like you're eating at a Michelin star restaurant and I am not even a big foodie. So I much prefer the experience of using these pieces of cutlery than the actual meals that I eat. But anyway, long story short, I love these pieces of cutlery. And I have to say that across the board, most tableware pieces by Hermes have become incredibly hard to find. Why? I'm sure that Hermes could explain that it has to do with their production. It has to do with the fact that they use really precious materials to plate their pieces like the Palladium collection and the Gold collection, which if you're wondering and if you haven't seen my original unboxing on these, I'll make sure to link that down below. But I have the silver plated Hermes pieces of cutlery because the gold ones, well, first of all, I do have a more cool toned home and the tableware that I own from Hermes is more cool toned. And then also the gold plated collection cannot be put into the dishwasher, which for me was just a no go. I can hand wash plates and I can hand wash cups. It's not my favorite thing to do, but I'm willing to do it. But when it comes to cutlery, I just have to put them in the dishwasher and when it comes to the gold plated collection it's not something that you can do with those pieces but anyway going back to why these pieces are so hard to get my conspiracy and i cannot prove this but this is just my theory is that there were rumors around out there online for years that said that the key to getting your dream Hermes back fast is buying Hermes tableware and Hermes cutlery which i mean Really buying anything from Hermes will help to build your relationship with the brand, but is buying cutlery and tableware more beneficial than buying shoes, ready-to-wear, fine jewelry? In my opinion, it is absolutely not. So unless you're buying these because of the experience, you're buying them because you truly love them, I really don't think that they're worth your money. If you're not going to use them and take advantage of them, it's just going to be a waste of money. So don't think that if you buy these pieces, it is guaranteed that you will be offered a bag. In my experience, that's just simply not true. Buy whatever you like, don't buy things just because you're hoping to get a bag. 
Yes, these pieces will help to build your profile and your purchase history with the brand and most importantly, your relationship, but so will pieces of fine jewelry, shoes, and ready to wear. But I do love these pieces. And if you are really into your home decor, if you're looking to buy pieces that you can genuinely use on a regular basis, these in my experience are some of the best pieces that you can buy. And this is the perfect segue into talking about a piece of ready to wear, which actually took me quite a long time to find. This was the very first serious piece of runway ready to wear that I ever considered from Hermes. And this is something that I first spotted, I mean, this was years and years ago. This was kind of at the beginning of me seriously getting into Hermes. And I remember seeing this one piece on the runway, which came in two colorways. It came in black with a white stripe, and then it came in white with a black stripe. And my boutique happened to have it. They had the black version which was the one that I preferred in a size medium that I got to try but medium was slightly too big because of the fit the cut and my sizing at this time so my advisor said you know it's the beginning of the season if you'd like me to try to transfer in a small for you let me know and I can try to get it but as I said it was really at the beginning of my Hermes journey and this shirt at the time I want to say it was a couple if not a few thousand dollars and I felt that it was just way overpriced for what it was. I understand that the quality is outstanding. I understand that these are handmade pieces, but still two, three thousand dollars on a simple or a more simplistic shirt is a lot of money to spend. So I said, let me think about it. My advisor was of course really understanding and she said that if I want it, I can let her know later on and she'll try her best to get one for me. So I went away, I kept thinking about this shirt, so about a month, maybe two later, I went back and asked her to try to transfer me this shirt in a size small. And unfortunately, it was the piece that got away because they were completely sold out. There wasn't any more left. So I thought that I just missed out and I'll never be able to buy this shirt for myself until a couple of years later when I went to an Hermes sale and I actually ended up finding this exact shirt, except I found it in white instead of black. So I have the version that is in white with the black stripe, which I still like, even though you haven't really seen me in this piece for two reasons. Number one, it is quite see-through, so it's not something that I can wear on camera in front of all these lights because it is quite sheer. And then the other reason is because it is quite a large size. Obviously, I bought it in the sale with I want to say 50 or 60 percent off which made it a lot more reasonable so i was kind of in the rush of the sale and i was just like you know it doesn't really matter what size it is i'll take it and i haven't had the time or the chance or really i haven't made the effort to take it to my tailor to have it fitted properly because i think this is oh it's a double extra large i thought it was just an extra large but it is a double extra large and when i tried it in the sale it didn't seem that big but it really is. So I should really take it to my tailor and have it fitted. But it is this really, really simple white shirt, which is made of, it is a cotton shirt, but there is something special about the way this piece is woven. And then it has this seamless black stripe running down the middle. And it also has two little stripes on the shoulders, which I think I have worn this piece a couple of times, but it really needs to be fitted. I can only wear this with a tight jacket over it just to kind of trick the eyes into thinking that it is my size, which it is not. It is really, really big and also quite long. So I should really take this to my tailor and start wearing this piece because it is a beautiful creation and it is so me. Now, one thing that I noticed about my white pieces, which actually has nothing to do with Hermes, but I actually noticed some of my white pieces going kind of yellow in my current wardrobe. I mean, if you've been with me for a while, you know that this apartment I was only supposed to be in for six months and I've been here for two years. So fingers crossed, it's time for me to move soon because in this wardrobe, I don't know what's going on. It is fully sealed. So it's not like sunlight is going in. I have a dehumidifier. I have my little cedar bowls, but all my white pieces are slowly oxidizing and going yellow so yes this piece really needs to be refreshed and taken better care of because even at the sale price it was i mean way more than how much anyone should spend on a simple shirt like this but it doesn't mean that i love it any less so 
Yeah, it is a piece that took me quite a long time to get. It was one of those pieces that I thought I would never be able to get my hands on, but because I found it in the sale, I felt like it was meant to be, even if it's not the right size. I have to be honest, I really had, I was really lucky with my air mesh journey, as some people like to call it, because from the very beginning, I always worked with really kind and understanding people, advisors who were just really happy to help and they wanted to teach you about RMS instead of making it tough for you to get your hands on the pieces that you really wanted, except when it comes to this one piece. And I'm not talking about the advisors that I shop with, but I'm talking about my experience in general, because this is a piece that took me years and years and years to get my hands on. And I couldn't understand how it can be so tough to find something so simple, which was one of the very first Hermes rodeos that I ever got into, which are the so black rodeos. Now these I have to say were not as tough to get as my MM rodeo because this is my so black rodeo in PM, which is the smallest size. This is the so black rodeo in GM. And then I also have the MM version, which I don't think I have ever used. And I don't actually know where it is. I think it's in its box somewhere. I know it's safe and sound, but I don't exactly know where it is. I went to look for it, but I gave up after 10 minutes. So I just pulled out these two pieces, but I also have the MM size, which is actually the one that I was looking for. And I remember when I first started shopping at Hermes, it was a piece that I asked for. My advisor said that if it ever comes in, she'll let me know. But anytime I went to a new boutique, anytime I traveled, I would stop by the local Hermes store and asked if they had this particular rodeo in stock. And I cannot tell you how many rude responses I got, how many times people laughed in my face when I asked for this piece. And they told me that I'll never get one. Well, now I have all three of them, which, you know, I just think when it comes to Hermes, you shouldn't give up. Anything popular and everything popular will be re-released in some shape or form sooner or later. So if there is something that was out there that you wanted to get your hands on, but you couldn't, were you not? I have a suspicion that it will come back at one point. I think the next piece that they'll bring back is going to be the Olga back charms. It's just a theory that I have, but I do think that it's been long enough that it's time for them to re-release those in some new reiteration. But anyway, going back to the rodeos, these were really, really tough to get. And as soon as they relaunched, I got a couple of the PM versions because the people that I shopped with, as soon as they got one, they were kind enough to reach out to me and ask me if I wanted to get my hands on one, which obviously I did. So I picked up a couple of these, then I got the GM size. And I actually feel like the MM size was the last one for me to hunt down, which is really the one that I wanted all along. But you know what they say, good things come to those who wait. And I think that is so true, especially when it comes to Airman. And last but not least, I have two bags to share with you guys. One of them, isn't actually here. I told you in a previous video that I ended up putting all my mini bags away before I left London and it's still not back. I should really go and pick it up. But why don't we start with that, which is going to be my Kelly Pochette. Now my Kelly Pochette might be the bag that took me the longest time to get. That bag, I mean, I don't even know how many years it took me, probably four, five, maybe even six years. It's a bag that I was asking for since the very beginning of my air mesh journey. And I only just got it last year for my birthday. So it's definitely a bag that took me quite a few years to get. And I remember doing the exact math because I got so many questions on whether the Kelly Pochette or the Mini Kelly is more difficult to get. And I did the math for you guys. I think in about four years, I was offered maybe five Mini Kellys. I got three of them and I was offered two or three Kelly Pochettes and I only ended up with one. So in my experience, the Kelly Pochette is a lot more difficult to get than the Mini Kelly. And I'm so grateful that I was able to get my hands on one with the exact specs that I wanted. So I wanted it in black Swift with gold or rose gold hardware, which is the piece that I ended up with. And if you'd like to find out more about the Kelly Pochette or how it compares to the Mini Kelly, I'll make sure to have some videos linked down below for you in the info box because I go into all the details and I cover 
anything and everything you could possibly want to know about the Kelly Pochette, but it is definitely an insanely, insanely difficult pack to get, and I don't even know why that is. I don't know why it's so much more difficult to get than a Mini Kelly 22. I think perhaps it's because the Mini Kelly 22 was launched as a limited edition bag back in 2015, and even though they continued making them, in the meantime, they might have thought that they'll just put the Kelly Pochette on the back burner. Maybe it's because the Kelly Pochette is... I mean, the Kelly Pochette technically should be easier to make. Not that I know how difficult it is to make a mini Kelly, but just based on how the back feels, it's a lot more slouchy, it is less structured, it doesn't really have a proper lining to it, it doesn't come with a shoulder strap, it doesn't have a proper structured handle, which is one of the most consuming parts on an Hermes bag to make. So you would think that they're easier to make so they can push out more of the Kelly pochettes, but that doesn't seem to be the case. If you really want a Kelly pochette, these days, you have to be pretty flexible in terms of the leather, the color, and more often than not, you will be offered a Kelly Pochette in exotic skins. But I do think that it is worth the money and the hype. I have, if I had to choose one back today, I would probably choose my Mini Kelly just because of the shoulder strap, but I go through different phases all the time. So if you ask me tomorrow, I might have a different answer for you. But anyway, the Kelly Pochette is definitely the bag that I think took me the longest to hunt down. And then the other bag, which again took me at least a couple of years to get, was my Herbag 39, which is definitely one of my most used bags currently. Honestly, this is the bag that I have been reaching for the most lately. And then my Kelly 35 in black toggle with gold hardware. But that one wasn't that difficult to find, so I had to go with this piece because I was really specific about getting a her bag in size 39. I had owned prior to getting this a her bag 31, but I really struggled with that because I wanted to use this as a work bag and the 31 doesn't actually fit a 13 inch MacBook. I mean, it does, you can put the MacBook in there, but you won't be able to fasten the bag. And obviously I was living and working in New York at the time and I just couldn't afford to have a $2,000 laptop hanging out of my bag while I was sitting on the subway. So I knew I wanted to get a Herbeck 39, which fits a larger MacBook perfectly. It even fits my current MacBook, which I think is 14 or maybe 15 inches. So it is a really generous bag, but it is lightweight. And because of the proportions, it is not nearly as overwhelming as, let's say, a Birkin or a Cali 40 would be. It is just one of my most favorite bags and I also love the fact that it is insanely worry free because it is made of canvas and you can really go to town with this bag it's almost indestructible I mean I think I told you guys this in my in-depth review on this bag that I actually had a bubble to explode in this one time and all I had to do is take this bag apart which you can really easily take it apart all you have to do is you unscrew this bar and then you can remove all the leather details and I just ended up taking the canvas part to my dry cleaner who was able to bring it back to life. I mean, it might not seem like it now because it is covered in the baby's hair and his kisses, but trust me, they were able to do a perfect job. So I would highly, highly recommend this bag. I think it is so underrated and I don't really understand why it is. It's one of the best bags that I have in my collection. I mean, it isn't perfect. It can be a challenge to get in and out of, but I do have some tricks that I shared in that original review of mine. So again, that is something that you'll find in the description box, but it is a bag that took me a really long time to get in a size 39. In fact, it was so hard to get that my home store's director had to place an order for me. So she specifically bought one for me at the podium, which was so generous of her and the reason she had to do that is because they first of all weren't really making the her bag in size 39 or at least most stores didn't buy into them and even if they did they didn't buy the black on black version which is obviously the one that i wanted and it has really become one of my most loved bags it is just such an incredible piece so if you're looking for the perfect travel bag the perfect work bag or just a larger bag do not underestimate the her bag it is just such an incredible piece and it is not nearly as widely recognized as known as the kelly or birkin which in my opinion makes this a lot better suited for a work bag if you work in a traditional office setting and you don't want something that 
screams and shouts the brand name. This, I think, is an incredible piece to get. And one more detail that I have to point out, because I know that a lot of people, as I mentioned, have issues with getting in and out of this bag, which I cannot argue with. It can be a challenge. Don't forget that the new updated her bag zips, which is what you'll buy from the boutique now or what you'll find there, do have a back pocket, which makes your life a lot a lot easier and my friends this brings us to the end of today's video on pieces from my Hermes collection that were a mission impossible to find or at least it felt like it while I was hunting for them and now it's your turn to let us know in the comment section what is the piece in your collection that was so hard to come by was it a Birkin was it a Kelly was it another bag or was it something completely unexpected please let us know in the comment section. And while you're down there, make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't done so yet. I really appreciate you being here and watching and I hope to see you back here with a new video really, really soon.